turn it around backward to slide the chassis in. And hopefully we will have a little hum. So uh, that's a 1930s Magnavox. Look at that thing. Yeah, this was pretty. Get a load of the, the tone arm rest. You pull it down and hook it. I've never seen that. This would have cost several hundred dollars in 1931. All right. I don't care about you. And I don't care about you. I do care about getting the speaker back in the circuit. There's the speaker. And the tubes are laying over here. There is a rectifier, a number 80. Everybody had number 80s. A number 57, that's the preamp. And the audio goes to the grid cap on the preamp. So there is no under the chassis input circuitry. And then the 2A3, the holy grail of audio tubes. Those are rare and sought after. But here is a home record player that used one. That would have been the highest wattage tube you could get in 1931. Short of a broadcast tube, of course. <clears throat> okay, I have not jumpered for the AC. I should have already done that. Give me just a second to find an alligator clip or a wire nut. Yeah. That would have been the on switch. The power switch goes there. Yeah, with a little luck, I've got it right. We'll find out in a minute. I normally have a light bulb in series with the power cord for safety. These this wires hanging out here hurt anything? Those are going to the, to the tone arm. See, there's your input cable right there. Come on, out of there. All right. <coughs> Let's see if we got lucky. Did blow the fuse. Lights coming on. Yes. Yeah, it works. A lot of gain. Right, let me see if we ground that to the chassis. That's the input. There's a massive input equalizing circuit up under the turntable for this. Okay, let's ground the shield. See if it's quiet. Yeah, it's happier. Sounds healthy. Yes. Large electrodynamic speaker. Biggest output tube you could get in those days. Look at the size of the speaker in here. It is huge. We're talking an eight inch electromagnet speaker made by Magnavox for Magnavox. It is a beauty. This would have been top of the line in the early thirties for somebody who really liked music. Look at this equalizer up there in the top. They went overboard with capacitors and resistors to get that Magnavox sound. And I'll bet it's glorious. So, so far so good. Uh, we'll have to do a number two yeah, on this one when you get it yeah, running. Uh, bridge, the, the big caps, they were open. Replace the coupling cap and uh, the plate feedback cap because it was shorted. Everything else I left alone for the time being. The resistors are good. The caps, mm, okay. You put a new power cord in it? I put a new power cord on it first thing. And I will pull the top out and get to that network and rebuild it. <clears throat> and then put it all together and see if the cartridge is any good. And I guarantee you it's not. And we will play some music. This has a direct drive gear motor. Uh, 
turntable with a ball governor to regulate the speed. You know, 1931, 60 cycle wasn't always 60 cycle, and in some places it wasn't even supposed to be. So this motor would run on any cycle and come up with the right speed. So, so far, so good. With a loose veneer there. This one, is, this one was a prize. Let me turn around and look at the front again. and uh, Yeah, let me spin it around. I guess it would be too much trouble to pull the chassis out and look underneath it. Well, we can. Give me a second. That was, uh, that was a modern style in 1930. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The Magnavox Concerto. Yeah, very, very nice. That's automatic stop to stop the turntable when the record's over. Big, heavy crystal cartridge. Can be rebuilt, of course. Volume and tone. Some extra needles in the little little dish there. You gotta take all this and lift it out to get to that to repair it. But that's the least of my worries right now. Let's have a look under the chassis just for laughs. Look at the finish on that. I went to get this, one of my cats was asleep on it. I did not want to give it up. Okay, I unplug the speaker. Take out the tubes because they will not clear the cabinet. When they shipped this, the amplifier got loose in transit and was slumping around in the, in the case. And I feared for the tubes, but thank goodness they were wrapped and packed and they didn't get broken. That would have made me cry. How much is that tube anyway? The tube? 50 to $150 if you can find one. Wow, look at that. Yeah. These caps were open, bridged them with new ones, a couple of new caps there. That old green cap looks, I guess it's still good. And so far they check okay. They'll be replaced eventually. But uh, 1931, that was a lot of work for a record player. That transformer's still good after all these years. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of work for a table record player. Look, look at the size of the speaker since so you can get a little bit shot of it. That is a speaker and a tabletop record player. That's, wow. a, that's amazing. Look at the size of the output transformer. That means good low frequency response. Big motor to drive the turntable. It's got flying ball governor on the end. Like a wind-up phonograph to regulate the speed. So, that was something. That's amazing, Paul. Yeah, it's one of those things I just had to have.